All the goods are yet to come. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I am taking you through all of the books that I am really anticipating for the second half of 2023. I've already talked to you about some of the books that I was really excited for in the first half of the year. Many of them I have already read and loved and knew that I would enjoy them. So hopefully this next batch is going to hit me just as well. First one up for me and coming out on the 20th of July is Love Me Do by Lindsay Kelk. Lindsay is one of my auto buy authors. Anytime she has got a new book out, it's instantly on my must read list. So I knew that this is one that I really could not wait to get to. In this book, we are following Phoebe, who goes to the US to visit her sister who lives in Los Angeles. While her sister is away, she's house sitting and gets to know her sister's neighbor, Belle, who has a massive crush on Ren. Ren is Suzanne, who's Phoebe's sister's tr personal trainer, neighbor, and they have gotten to know each other as well. Phoebe writes greeting cards for a living, and she's known as the Cupid among her friendship group, so she thinks, hey, why don't I set these two up together? I feel like they would get along really well. However, Cupid's arrow might have gone a little bit off course this time. I've heard whispers from Lindsay that this is slightly more spicy than the books that she's written previously. And I really, really hope that that is true because I would love a little bit more spice, just a tiny little bit more steam in the books that she writes. Let's see if that truly happens and let's see how I get along with this one. Next up and coming out on the 3rd of August is With Love from Cold World by Alicia Thompson. She is the same author of Love in the Time of Serial Killers, which I absolutely adored. So I am really, really excited for this one. This is about Lauren and Asa who work together in a tourist attraction called Cold World, which is like a year round winter wonderland in the heat and humidity of Orlando in Florida. It's two things that you completely juxtapose when you're thinking of each other, but like you would imagine, things are not going super well for them at the moment financially. To try and drum up a little bit more business, Lauren and Asa are kind of made to work together by their bosses, except that they have never really gotten along together. They've always clashed heads and butted around each other. But like many workplace romances, having brought them together might actually make them realize that they're not as bad as the other thought. Coming out on August 29th is Rain by Catherine McGee. This is the fourth book in the American Royal series, which reimagines America not as a democracy with a president, but as a monarchy. And in this one, the monarchy is kind of thrown on its head. By a series of events, Jefferson, who is the brother of Queen Beatrice and of Princess Samantha, is now on the throne and he has Daphne by his side, something she has wanted the entire way through the book but he has never truly forgotten his childhood love, Nina. Is there any way that they could get back together? Is there a way that Beatrice could come back onto the throne? And where has Samantha disappeared to? There was such a huge cliffhanger at the end of the third book that I knew we were going to get a fourth book. I knew it wasn't just going to end the story here and I am genuinely so interested and so intrigued to see how this is going to end up. I'm not sure if this will be the last book in the series. I don't know if there's going to be a fifth book to come out of this, but I am really interested to see where Catherine is going to bring this story. What will, however, be the last book in a series is coming out on the 31st of August, and that is Ashling Ever After by Sarah Breen and Emer McLeisett. This is, as I said, the final book of the Ashling series, which I have followed religiously the whole way through since it was published in 2017. Ashling is one of my favorite literary characters. We seem to have weirdly the same things happen to us in the same timelines, in that we both lost our jobs at the same time. We both moved countries at the same time. There isn't a whole lot of info out about the book at the moment, apart from the fact that the pull quote on the cover was everybody's looking for that something, which is a Westlife lyric. So I have a feeling there's going to be some kind of references to that around the book. I'm so intrigued and so excited to see how Ashling's story is going to end, but I do not want to say goodbye to one of my closest friends in the book community. Another installment to a series that is coming out in September, coming out on the 14th of September, is The Last Devil to Die by Richard Osman. This is the fourth book of the Thursday Murder Club series, which is a very kind of cozy crime mystery series set around a retirement home in the south coast of England. This time, all of the action is taking place on Boxing Day, which is the day after Christmas Day. There is a mysterious package going around the UK and there are bodies starting to drop one of which belongs to somebody who is very close to a particular member of the Thursday Murder Club. Crime doesn't take a break over Christmas, so our four intrepid detectives are tasked with finding out what is happening, 
where has this package come from what is its final destination and why are so many people being caught up in the timeline too also coming out on September 14th is the fourth installment of Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This one is called Before We Say Goodbye and is written by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. It is translated from the Japanese and it is set around a small cafe in Tokyo called Funiculo Funicula where you can travel back into the past. There are a couple of stipulations with this. You have got a couple of rules that you need to follow, but the idea of traveling back to the past is something that so many people have taken up. And like all of the other books in the series, we're meeting four new people who want to go back and make things right. There is a husband who has so much that he has left to say to his wife, a daughter who has fallen out of contact with her father, a woman who turned down a marriage proposal, and another woman who never got to say goodbye to her dog. I have cried at every single one of these that I've read so far, and given what the stories are going to be, I think we're going to go for a four from four here. A couple of days later, on the 19th of September, comes out Cleat Cute by Meryl Wesner. I have read one of their books before and I fell utterly in love with it, so I know this one is going to have to be an instant read for me. This follows Phoebe and Grace, who are two teammates on the US women's soccer team who are preparing for the World Cup. And Grace has been going through a spout of injuries lately, so Phoebe has been called up to replace her. But sparks are starting to fly, not just on the pitch where they are both fighting to get their position on the team, but off the pitch where they have kissed each other and are now realizing that their feelings are going a lot deeper than they were expecting them to. Like I said, this is going to be the second of Meryl Wisner's books that I'm going to read. I read Mistakes Were Made at the start of 2023 and utterly fell in love with it. So hopefully, this one is going to work just as well for me, even though it is a sports romance and that is not something that I have read a whole lot of. Coming out on the 26th of September is The Wake Up Call by Beth O'Leary. Beth O'Leary is a little bit Marmite for me. Some of her books have worked for me so, so well, like The No Show, like The Flat Share, and some of them haven't. I really didn't like The Road Trip and I think The Switch, when I think back about it, it could have been done a little bit better. However, I'm going into this one with a completely open mind. It is a workplace romance and I really enjoy reading those. So let's see how I get on with it. This one follows Izzy and Lucas who are both working at the Forest Manor Hotel, which is going through a time. It is the busiest time of the season and the hotel is a little bit in ruins. Everything is falling apart and financially they could be doing a little bit better. Izzy and Lucas are tasked to work at the front desk and when they reunite one of the guests with a missing wedding ring, things start to turn up. So they decide that in order to keep the hotel afloat so that by Christmas everything will be back to normal, they try to reconnect everyone else with their missing property. This feels like such an interesting idea for a book that I'm kind of intrigued to see how it's going to go because I feel like it's one of two ways. Either it will completely shine or it might fall to pieces, just like the hotel. Almost a month later, coming out on the 24th of October is Iris Kelly Doesn't Date by Ashley Herring Blake. This is the final installment of the Bright Falls trilogy and it is following Iris, who is best friend to Claire from the first book and Astrid from the second book. Iris is a little bit of a loner. Relationships have never really worked out for her, but she's looking at the relationships that her friends are in with a little bit of longing in her eyes. She really wants somebody who is going to be there for her, who is going to support her and protect her, but that's never really worked out in the past. She seems like she's much more happy to go out, to hook up and to come back and forget about them the next day. That is until she meets Stevie at a bar. They come home together and have possibly the worst one night stand where nothing goes to plan and Stevie leaves Iris's apartment kind of with her tail between her legs. A couple of days later, Iris goes to the local theatre to sign up for a production that they are doing and it turns out that Stevie is one of the main actors in the play. The problem is that Stevie has told her friends that she and Iris really hit it off and that now they are officially together. So to keep this facade up and also to give some ideas for Iris, who's going through a little bit of writer's block as a romance author, Iris and Stevie decide to fake date each other. As you can tell, the dating doesn't stay fake for very long and sparks start to fly between Iris and Stevie when life tries to get in between the two of their connection. Coming out on October 26th is The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. This is a follow-up to The Appeal, one of my favourite books of last year, if not my absolute favourite book of last year. We are back with the Fairway Players, who are now putting on a production of the Panto Jack and the Beanstalk, 
Sarah Jane is now the chairperson of the Dramatic Society and things start to go haywire when a body shows up. You are back with Femi and Charlotte, the two law students who tried to solve the case from the first book and now you are trying to find out who this dead body belongs to, where it has come from and why it's here. I absolutely adored the layout of the appeal. It is written in email correspondence, in text messages, in call transcripts and I'm so excited to see how this is going to go this time. The appeal hooked me so much that I didn't get off my chair for six hours reading it and I feel like this is going to be exactly the same thing. Also coming out on October 26th is a memoir that I am genuinely so excited for and that is Glutton by Ed Gamble. Ed Gamble is one of my favourite comedians at the moment and he's also a podcaster with the podcast Off Menu which talks quite a lot about food co-hosted by his friend James Acaster. They invite a guest on every week to talk about the guest's dream menu, food that they have loved throughout their lives and I am hooked on this podcast. Ed is quite a pretentious boy. He grew up with a diet of salmon, of celery, of mashed potatoes, where as a lot of us were probably eating chicken nuggets, fish fingers and chips. While he was a teenager, he was heavily obese, but he was also diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And I'm really interested to see what that impacted on his life. He has also lost quite a lot of weight, and I'm pretty sure that some of that was through a dietary change rather than exercise regime. So I'm really interested to see how he incorporated that into his life as well. If anybody knows their food, I feel like it would be Ed Gamble. So I'm really interested to see how this one's going to go. Finally, coming out on the 9th of November is Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oldman. I have kind of moved away from YA recently, but this series is just calling me back. There is no way I cannot finish out the series. I know that this is going to be the penultimate book and it is going to follow Nick and Charlie. From the ending of the fourth book, I'm really interested to see where we're going to go here. I know that there is quite a lot of mental health representation that I'm expecting. I'm kind of expecting to see what life is going to be like now that Nick is going off to university and Charlie is left behind the year after him. So I'm interested to see how that dynamic is going to go in their relationship. But I cannot wait for the cozy vibe of this book to come back into my life. Those are all of the books that I cannot wait to have come out at the end of 2023. What book coming out in the next six months are you the most excited for? If you would love to leave me a comment but you can't think of anything you'd like to say, then just leave me a book emoji. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.